The following are slices of raw footage from the Peter Leeds team. Because this is going to be one of the most profitable trades, it's clearly obvious that gold mining stocks are going to increase in price. In my opinion, I'm wrong plenty of the time. And I always warn you about things that are going to come next. And one of the things I've been talking about that is taking much longer than I expected was for home prices to decline. But now we're starting to get some indications that what I've been saying is coming this whole time is finally here. If you take a look at the Case Shiller Home Price Index or chart of the single family home prices, these are from Trading Economics. You'll see that we're just starting to crest at the top before in my opinion, what we're going to do is come down pretty significantly in real estate prices. No country in the history of the world has ever made so much debt as we have. And the fact that intelligent people, economists, accountants are looking at the same information I am, and they're not seeing it clearly, that's really freaking me out. People are just not wanting to see it, perhaps. That's the only thing I could suggest. Maybe they don't want to see underneath the curtain or behind the curtain underneath the rug they don't want to see it whatever it is i expected gold mining companies especially the high quality ones to do dramatically better than they have been i also believe that they're set up right now for what will be one of the biggest most profitable trades most people have in their lifetime coming up but here's a trading economics 25 year chart of interest rates and i showed you before Right there is what caused all the problems. Rates were too low for too long, and it became easy for Joe Sixpack to take on $200,000 in debt. They're able to pay the carrying costs, or you buy more home than you could afford. And the Federal Reserve is just like, oh, we were only kidding, and all of a sudden people are losing their houses. But a lot of times when the mass majority expects a pivot or interest rates to start coming down after having climbed, Usually when that happens, there will be a lot of strength in the stock market going up to that point because people are expecting a little bit of relief from these punishing tactics that the Federal Reserve is putting upon all of us. Interest rates go up, that does damage to the economy. Interest rates go down, that usually helps the economy. But unfortunately, as this chart is showing you, a lot of times when the rates are coming down, it's because the economy is already in a recession and they need to respond to that. This event right now will be very similar to many historical precedents and most of the time it plays out this way so this is typical the rates will be getting closer to the point where the fed pivots where they start to lower and i've put a lot more stake and agreement into the argument that this could be when the stock market comes down once the rates start coming down and of course the number one most significant thing that's happening in the stock market or will happen in the overall stock market and the world economy and the world's macroeconomic situation the number one thing that's playing out right now that's going to happen that's going to change everything is going to be the invasion of southern lebanon to fight hezbollah by israeli forces once they're done what they're doing right now in gaza what this area represents is actually the war between the inflationary pressures that i talk about all the time on this channel and the promised economic damage from the Federal Reserve. That's what interest rate increases are doing. They're hurting the economy. They're hurting you. They're costing you more money. They're costing everybody more money. Businesses do. That's why it seems like inflation is range bound right now. But it will eventually break higher. And in the words of just about every other YouTuber a year and a half ago, inflation will go much, much higher. And we hit an all-time record again with gold. And a big part of it is that there's trading windows. In any stock, any commodity, there's about 80% of the gains and about 20% of the time. And that's exactly what just happened with gold. Last I looked, it was at $2,166. Do you remember not that long ago when people were saying, oh, is it going to be able to break through $2,000 or we're going to reach $2,000 and it was a big deal? That was like weeks ago. This will be the year of gold mining stocks. There's a lot of things that are going to happen that could potentially spike oil prices very dramatically in a very short window of time. And at the same time, there's a big overall pull lower on oil prices because of slowing of the global economy, a few other factors. A premise I've had in the past is that gold prices were going to increase a lot. And from much lower levels, they've climbed to record highs everywhere, every country, every currency on the earth. 
we were looking at things like I would show you the central bank buying trends. I talked about all the reasons the monetary creation is just going to keep liquidating the value of the dollar and therefore make things like commodities appear higher in price or be higher in price. Here is from 2023, the full year of the buying and selling among world central banks. Here's the top five countries and the bottom five countries. And this premise has only partially played out. Gold prices have a lot higher to go. The invasion of Lebanon will almost certainly happen and it's going to throw so many things out of whack. It'll affect gold prices, it'll affect life, it'll affect military alliances, it will affect oil prices and availability. It's going to be the most pivotal thing that's going to be happening very soon this year and everything is saying it, it's going to play out. You need to, as an investor, as a person, as people who you care about, you need to be aware of this stuff. You need to think about it ahead of time. What's going to happen as this plays out exactly as many parties have already said the whole time that it is going to play out. When everybody, everybody, especially on YouTube, maybe it gets clicks or something like that, everybody was saying that inflation was going to go higher. You know who I'm talking about, who you saw say it to your face. And then once it started to crest out of the top like I told you it would I told you also then that once inflation starts falling it typically falls very quickly as it has one of the things a lot of you've been asking about is why is silver not doing really well when gold is making all-time new highs and this is an opportunity because of there's a silver deficit every year the world produces from all the mines produces about 825 million ounces but as a planet, we use about, we're expected to be using up to about 1.2 billion ounces of silver. And that is going to reflect in prices and prices specifically of silver mining companies, like a few of the ones that we told you about in the Peter Leeds newsletter. U.S. jacked up its interest rates to 5% uh, and has led the world in terms of interest rate hikes. And that attracts investment, like treasury bills, investments. And that's all fine, but you have to measure, the only true measure of currencies is a currency against measured against gold. Silver will have its day, just as I told you that gold would have its day when people didn't believe me anymore because it was taking so long and I've been saying it for so long. And now here we are. And I'm telling you other things that are going to happen next, such as silver prices will catch up. They'll start performing more like gold, but not yet, not very soon, but it will happen. And there's going to be a massive boomerang trade or benefit profit coming from silver mining companies. The only thing you got to put into it is a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of money, and a whole ton of patience. I don't believe that the U.S. economy is as strong as they would like to, to have you believe. And you, can't, you just got to look at their fiscal situation. It's, an, it's very problematic. Those are very, very big numbers. Hey, listen, I'll give you two other statistics. Since the turn of the century, since 2001, gold has outperformed stocks and bonds. Since 1971 to the present, gold has outperformed, uh, gold has gone up 5,700%. The Dow Jones, Dow Jones has gone up 4,500%. And again, I'm going to say to you, it doesn't matter what you're rooting for. The question is, should you be putting your money to something that will protect you in the event of an unraveling well, that's, well, you know, that's that's the question but inflation is even showing signs of bouncing back again as it's going to do as i told you but always look at it from the perspective of the entire world there's countries all over the world that are having problems with inflation they're having incredible problems paying back u.s dollar denominated debts as long as the U.S. dollar is so strong. Speaking of which, I'd say too that that is also what's going to come down next. The U.S. dollar, we're going to have a dollar crisis. There's no way around it. If you think about the setup that we're in, where there's all these debts that have to be repaid and we just keep building them and building them and building them, no one is talking about what's going to happen. Except for me, for the last 10 years. It's not, it's very different than every other rally that I've ever seen. And it's happening almost at an uninterrupted pace, marching its way forward a couple hundred bucks an ounce, and no one can explain it. And I, my guess is we'll find out down the road what happened. <laughs>
but it, 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 I'm, I'm certain it involves geopolitical players. Everybody knows, anyone who's looking, everyone knows that the global economies are really slowing down. No one even believes this growth pledge from China. And what you're seeing is that there's a bias for oil prices to drift lower over time to a certain degree. But there's going to be a lot of things that are going to spike up oil prices in very short windows of time. And that's why you need to check out the video we did about the oil spike and fade. And as you know, if you ever go to the Peter Leeds oil depletion clock, you can see how many years we have left until we run out of oil. And I always tell you that the wars, based on all of this, are going to start 20, 30 years before we run out of oil. So that gives us about 20 years or less, maybe 15. And some of the oil wars and the posturing and the military conflicts are actually starting right now. There's things being done, decisions being made. China's building fake islands on top of big oil reserves. This is going to be a big thing. It's going to be the main driver of war going forward in the next 50 years, 100 years. But to clarify something I always say about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, there are zero-sum games. That doesn't mean that, and that's what I want to clarify, it doesn't mean that Bitcoin can't go to $200,000, $300,000 per Bitcoin. I'm saying for that to happen, there needs to be new fresh money coming in off the sidelines, which could or could not happen. I'm not sure, but I'm saying that it's not as though Bitcoin increases in value on its own. It needs to increase in value because people are paying more for it. More money needs to come into the space. Every cryptocurrency is a zero-sum game, 100% of them. But what I always say about Bitcoin is that of cryptocurrencies, as long as the concept exists, there will always be Bitcoin. It's kind of like when you think of the world's most famous painting, most people think about the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa will always be the most famous painting. Bitcoin will always be the representation of the concept of cryptocurrencies because they were the first mover. They will always be around even when a lot of these altcoins go to zero, go bankrupt, many of which have already done that. Now I want to show you a long-term chart of interest rates in the United States of America. And I want to point out a couple of things on this chart. The gray areas are the recessions. And you might notice that a lot of time the recession comes once interest rates start to decline. In many cases, interest rates rise up until the recession. And as they start to decline, the recession begins. And I understand that a lot of that has to do with the fact that once you're in the recession, there's all these economic problems. And so they'll responsively lower interest rates. But that doesn't explain the times when interest rates start to come down before the recession arrives. Like here and here. Like here leading up to 2001, or like here leading up to 2007 and 8. Even this baby recession, which took two months and doesn't count because it was based on of the completely unusual event of the resurgence of the Spanish flu, basically. And when people think the rates are going to be starting to come down, you think that, well, things will be easier, things will get better. Your mortgage will cost less. Your car payments will cost less. Your credit card payments will cost less. Businesses will also benefit because the rates will be lower. Yes, that's all true. But a lot of times, as the rates start to come down, that is when we're going to go head first right into this approaching recession, which has been on the doorstep for such a long time now. Everyone thinks the rates are going to start coming down, and then it'll be happy days forever at that point. Permanent prosperity, like they should say in 1929. But this is going to go probably opposite to what so many people are anticipating and that so many people are set up for. And of course, you've seen massive strength in gold prices, as I told you about from years ago until now, and I'm telling you about it, it's going to keep on going. You haven't seen anything yet. Gold went up over $100 an ounce in five days. And I always tell you what I tell my father or what I tell my kids, exactly what I say to them is what I say to you. Newmont was at a capitulation point. It will be going a lot higher going forward, as will all gold miners, because they're starting to catch up to the concept of, wow, gold prices are so much higher. Now we're making, instead of a dollar an ounce for each ounce of gold we produce and sell to the market, instead of making a dollar, we're now making $101. And all of a sudden, all these companies are incredibly profitable. Good, high-quality gold mining stocks like the ones we talk about in the Peter Leeds newsletter will be the number one most profitable asset class of any, in my opinion, throughout 2024. Plus, we've got a screenshot of the proof of the $6,000 profit that Drew made while he's sitting in the hot tub playing Kodak shares that we told him about in the Peter Leeds newsletter. 
I'll show you some clips that I heard on a blog from Preston Stewart, and he's talking about the likelihood of a war with Hezbollah, which has already started, and now it's just becoming more likely in the light. Supposedly, Iran sent a message to Hezbollah to prepare for an all-out war against Israel that will open soon. In a new report, they say the commander of the Iranian Quds Force recently met with Nasrallah in Lebanon. It was reported that Tehran gave the organization the green light to prepare for a large-scale attack on Israel to the extent that the IDF maneuvers into Lebanon. Protect yourself, figure out what you're going to do so that you can land on your feet, help people you care about, even enrich your wealth. There's going to be a lot of dangers and risks here, but that's where all the opportunities are coming from. And this is what we're trying to talk about and show you about. It's a very dangerous time in the world right now, and the decisions you make right now are going to make all the difference for you 10 years from now. I had another premise that inflation was going to fall, and it's very important that you remember that that was at a time when inflation had done nothing in recent history except for climb higher. It was also at a time when everything was going higher. And I'm not just talking about inflation. There were stocks, real estate, cryptocurrencies, artwork, monetary creation was going through the roof, diamonds went higher in price, groceries were more expensive. Everything was expanding. And even interest rates started climbing. It was chasing, inflation went off that way and interest rates chased it right up trying to catch up with it. Peter, how could you not know there was limited inventory? And all this monetary creation is driving prices of homes higher and interest rates were keeping people from leaving their house or moving. And people would wonder, didn't you understand that the high prices, just the unaffordability is keeping people from moving and further constraining the supply. And what about the fact that there's an insufficient number of new builds? Why didn't you think of that, Peter? Well, I did. Of course I did. But I look at things a bit differently. For example, you're told the economy is so strong. They say, look, we have really low unemployment and the stock market is high. And so people in the mainstream are thinking that means the economy is good. I look at other indicators such as like, oh, I don't know, debt. If somebody pulls up to you, beside you in a brand new Mercedes and they say, hey, check out my new car, but they bought it on their credit card. They're not wealthier. They're just more indebted. Our nation is not healthy. Our economy is not healthy. It's just indebted. The entire economy is living off of debt. And we're nearing a point where we won't even be able to pay the carrying costs on our debts. But I got off track. Let's get back to real estate. For example, when homes have surpassed any reasonable level of affordability, that'll give way to some demand destruction. Meanwhile, builders are building a lot. I'll show you a chart of the construction spending. This is from Trading Economics. And I also thought that the recession would be here by now. And that would have put a lot of pressure on home prices by this point. Oil prices will be absolutely unpredictable. No matter who you are, no matter what you know, you could easily get washed out because oil prices are going to be volatile in every direction for specific reasons. An example of something that will make the oil price fade lower are the weakening economies worldwide. There's a lot of recessions popping up right now and we're going to get into that. But you tell me, do debts have to be paid? Are debt levels out of control for people, your neighbor, you, your coworkers? municipalities, the state you live in, the federal government, is that out of control? And talking about the federal government, that debt bomb, can it just be ignored? Does it have to be paid? There's counterparties. Somebody's getting stiffed if they're not paying what they owe. And it's not just that the higher rates make it tougher to pay your bills. Credit card bills are higher, your auto loans are higher or more expensive to pay for. Your mortgage for sure is higher. But it's also that they're taking people out of the consumer market. You might be interested in buying a car, but you don't want to be saddled with these massive payments now so people don't buy a car at all. So there's people being taken out of the consumer economy, and that's not good for the economy. And again, that's just another force that's keeping real estate prices high because of the lack of inventory, because people are moving. That's an example of Demand destruction. Things are getting so expensive that nobody's buying things. They're not able to buy things. And it's important to remember that this is during a time of absolutely insane monetary creation. Here's a chart from the St. Louis Fed of monetary creation. The more money that gets created, the less value each dollar has. And oil is a lot like copper. It's a reflection of economic activity. So there's a lot of 
declining expectations for economic activity and growth. There's an expectation for a global growth slowdown in a lot of places worldwide. This is from the IMF, International Monetary Fund. We expect that for Europe as a whole, 2023 growth will be 1.3%. It was 2.7% in 2022. The growth rate more than cut in half. If we drop that much again, we'd be in negative territory. And Associated Press is reporting that Japan is now in recession too. Growth for the previous quarter was also revised downward to negative 0.8%, meaning that Japan is in recession, defined as two consecutive quarters of contraction. Oh, we're bringing that one back, that old saw. <laughs> the United Kingdom's also in recession. A few other countries in the EU are very close to it as well, are going to enter it very soon. This is from Al Jazeera. Britain's gross domestic product shrank by 0.3% in the last three months of 2023, after contracting 0.1% in the third quarter. So all these recessions, all this economic slowdown is going to result in less demand on oil. But there's a lot of other reasons why oil prices will decline. For example, calmings of conflicts. If there's a big risk premium built into oil prices because there's a big war right in the Middle East, and then that calms down, that takes away the risk premium and therefore the price is lower. And there's other things too, like new energy fines or incentives from the government, controls by the government as well. And you don't need to predict where oil prices are going. You need to predict where economies are going. So if you know that economies are slowing down, that means they're using less oil and therefore the demands on oil decrease and therefore the prices generally go lower. There's also other factors too, such as OPEC and the decisions they make. There's lots of stuff going on in oil. This is going to be almost impossible for anybody to call until we get through this current period that we're in. Oh, you've waited long enough. Let's talk about the things that are going to spike oil prices. All of these are terrible. I hope they don't happen. You hope they don't happen. Everyone hopes they don't happen. But Israel is very likely to invade southern Lebanon. That will be going against Hezbollah and dramatically expanding the war. Things in the Red Sea are getting way more active now, too. Germany is even bringing warships there to help out. Even with the Houthi rebels, there's all these supply disruptions. Russia's even bragging about their new space weapon. It's basically a nuclear satellite they just throw up there and goes around and they can blow it up whenever they want, take out a bunch of satellites. But the point is, if a war breaks out, like a real war, like World War III level kind of stuff, satellites are going to be getting taken out. North Korea knows how to do this. Russia, China, America, a few other countries too. If you take out a satellite, that changes everything, including missile defense systems coordination of militaries. Everything goes down. And the only other way you get internet is through cables in the bottom of the ocean, which are so long, such a soft target, that it's absolutely asinine to try and have any kind of defense to protect them. The point is that you've got this complex web of macroeconomic events, so many points of which could instantly result in an action that will spike oil prices dramatically. Even if that spike is $1.50. It'll still happen in a very short window of time. Or certain things could happen that would absolutely cut availability or reroute ships and add to the journey, taking oil delivery longer to get there. So what I did is I broke down the next part to really short do and do not. So do, I would suggest, and this is not trading advice for you, you do what you want to do, I don't know anything. I would suggest that you get exposure to really good high quality oil companies. And if you want to go smaller, take on a little bit more risk reward, then only invest in the types of oil companies that we talk about in the newsletter. There's a lot of bad stocks in the two or three dollar range that look good that are not good. So have some exposure to oil. Don't worry about when the prices decline and don't act too soon when the prices rise. I just think it's a good idea to make sure that you're exposed to oil always. Very important, because anything could happen. In that case, you would have wanted to own a couple of these larger oil companies or some of the specific smaller oil companies that are gonna do really well that we talk about in the newsletter. So that's the do. Now it's easy. The do not is, I would suggest that you don't trade this at all. If you're trading options, whether puts or calls, I wouldn't go near it. I certainly wouldn't expect anybody to be able to time the events that are about to happen with oil prices. Just like with gold, that I always tell you, gold's not going anywhere no matter what happens. Get oil, get gold, be exposed to that, and then you can look at things like copper, 
taking chances on stocks like pixel works that we picked on january 8th stuff like that if you want some of our free learning tools or you want to see why the peter lee's newsletter is one of the most popular financial newsletters of all time swing over to peterleads.com and you can learn all about it do you guys remember that we talked about exactly this a few times over the past couple of quarters about people are not understanding the potential of which way the interest rates are actually going to go everyone's just expecting that okay rates are coming down now we're all in happy days and everything and they're just letting their guard down and now they're acting surprised nobody watching these videos on the peter leeds channel was surprised at all this is from mondo and it's all the layoffs that have happened in january 2024 look at some of the names on this list citigroup Levi Strauss, Duolingo, iRobot, Time Magazine. We've been had layoffs at Macy's, X, Paramount, TikTok, and the big one being Front Desk that lost 200 people, which is not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but for this company, that represented 100% of their workforce. These layoffs are going to eventually absorb out into the numbers that you're seeing reported by the governments when they're trying to tell you that the economy is strong. The unemployment rate will start to climb as soon as this recession begins, which will be relatively soon in my opinion. And that's one way to turn a small amount of money into a lot. We're here to help you try and land on your feet and make some money out of whatever money you have, avoid loss, help the people you care about, and try and get involved in some of these major opportunities that are all around you right now. That's what we do. We can help you with all of this. More and more currency liquidation, which is how they keep avoiding these government shutdowns. These are liquidated currency. They liquidate your currency. 